pace is quickening. Engines screaming louder. All eyes are on the flagman. And suddenly, the green flag is out. The race is on. And what is this? David Pearson, a brash young rookie whose 1961 Pontiac was the fastest qualifier in the field, has thrown caution to the wind and cut inside in a swirl of dust as he attempts to beat the leaders into the first turn. Time is running out now. And no matter how fast Roberts turns the track, he is too far behind to catch Pearson unless something goes wrong with Pontiac number three. Pearson zooms out of the second turn on his way to the white flag. And suddenly, something does happen. Rubber goes flying as Pearson's right rear tire blows on the backstretch. There's no time to stop. It's all or nothing at all. Pearson has got to get that Pontiac under the white flag and then clear around the mile and a half track again with nothing but hot, battered metal holding up the right rear side of his car, limiting his speed to a mere 40 miles an hour. This may be the quickest pit crew in the business today. Pearson's Cotton Owens crew has made it a science. Every member has studied slow motion films of himself in action on a stop. I imagine David Pearson isn't the calmest fellow right now. He's under orders to pace himself or go slower in this race because he'll win the national championship if he's still running at the finish. I know it's all David Pearson can do to keep from speeding up his pace. Right now, he's in 14th place but he's ahead of Hilton, the only man he has to beat to win the national championship. Hilton's limping, and it's a shame. With just 50 miles left, he's lost his battle with Pearson for the Grand National Point Championship. 100 miles into the race, the Dodgers of Bobby Isaac and Buddy Baker are running 1-2, but Richard and David have begun their charge. Now there is no holding back, no watching each other. Now they are flat out. By lap 110, they are running 1-2 for the championship. Petty has left a wheel and tire embedded in the wall of turn two. As the Petty crew works frantically to straighten the twisted sheet metal, David Pearson moves into the lead. Pearson leads now. He no longer must beat Petty. Now he must beat the track. Now David Pearson and Leroy Yarborough, the leading money winners of the 69 season, have at each other. With Petty out, Pearson doesn't need to win this race to remain champion. But as long as the race is there to be won, he will try to win it. David wanted to win the race, and I wanted to win the race. And the way that we go about doing this, I guess, is just run one another hard enough to break. It was pretty evident we weren't going to slow down regardless of what we got on our pit boards and all. Now Leroy Yarbrough comes to the inside of David Pearson. He's trying to get around him. They've got some traffic in the first turn. He goes back Indian file. Leroy Yarbrough and David Pearson side by side. But Pearson's engine has developed a misfire. It is over. Yarborough takes the checkered flag. Pearson is second on seven cylinders. Well, when I first started, I didn't think I would ever become a champion. Of course, I always wanted to. This time winning the championship, it means quite a bit to me because when I first started, I knew it was a hard road to travel. And in fact, my first race, I think I won about $13 in it. And so I feel like if I won the championship against the guys I'm running against now, I've done a good job. Two of the greatest in Grand National Racing are really have it at it. Richard Petty chasing David Pearson. Pearson 21, Petty 43. There could be no better competition out there right now than these two men. The great giants, in fact, of NASCAR racing. And in fact, the crowd themselves are on their feet because these two men must be the favorites down here at Daytona. All right, coming down out of turn number four, coming down past the start-finish line. And Pearson backs off for Petty. Something wrong with Pearson. Petty takes the lead. But in 
Harrison backed off on it. It looks almost as he ran out of petrol or something. I've never seen anything like this happen before. It could be very bad luck for him, but my goodness, what an advantage. Richard Petty, the crowd are absolutely on their feet and yelling. Richard Petty's got an enormous advantage. Three or four hundred yards, it looks like, on that back straight away, down there at almost 200 miles an hour. And there is David Pearson falling back on this very last lap of this fantastic race, but he seems to be closing up, Keith. To have stopped so suddenly, to have suddenly slowed up like that makes me think, though, Jackie, he backed off on purpose because obviously he's still got horsepower and he's now closed it right in behind Richard Petty as they turn and come for home. Can Pearson slingshot him as he comes down low? Petty may run him into the fence and it's going to be Pearson winning it. An incredible, daring move and it paid off for David Pearson. Well, you're a crotchety old grandpa, David. I'll tell you, that finish was something else. Well, Chris, I knew that uh, if I let him stay behind me, that he would draft me and beat me, so I just backed off right there at the, last flag, or the white flag and let him go on by, then I got him back, coming off the board. You know, David, I've never seen a driver so in control of the situation as you were. Didn't you have any doubts at all that you'd win? Well, oh, yeah, uh, I was all time. I really didn't know for sure where I could get him back or not. In fact, I liked to slow up a little too much when I let him go by me. Well, if Richard had done that to you, would you feel a little insulted? Well, if he'd done that to me, I'd have backed off and stayed right behind him. And in the lead is Richard Petty, who has taken David Pearson on the back stretch. Richard Petty is in the lead by three or four car lengths over David Pearson. White flag is out. One lap to go. Keep your eye on the rear vision mirror. He said it's extremely important. I don't believe that you have to tell Richard Petty to keep his eyes in the rear vision mirror. I reckon he's throwing out the window right now. I don't think he's even interested. There they go, and they're coming in. Everybody is standing here at the Daytona International Speedway. Look at David Pearson. He has moved closer. Can he do it? He's going to pull out now. He's going to try for the top. I don't know. He's down on the inside. He's even. He's got the lead, but there's a car ahead of him. There's a slower car ahead of him. And Richard Petty and Pearson go high. Pearson now has the lead. Petty tries to go back down on the inside. As they come out of the fourth turn, they only have about... 750 yards to go. Oh! oh it's an absolute straightaway. They did hit. Oh! Teddy smashes into the wall. Will he come across the start finish line? He's going to win the race. He's going to win it spinning. As he, I believe, will take the checkered flag. No, he did not make it. He, he is less than 100 yards from it. Here comes Pearson. Pearson is going to try to make it across the finish line. Teddy has his car going. Pearson's going to win it. Oh, gosh, he wins the race. What a finish for a boy. I've never seen anything like that. It's unbelievable. Well, it means a lot to me, uh, Chris, because I've been trying so long to win this race, and I uh, just could never be able to do it. And so I told him on the radio uh, right before things started, I said, what am I going to do with this boy on my tail? Because I knew good and well he was going to stay there, but he made a mistake and uh, passed me, and so that's what I wanted him to do. You had a great drive. We know everybody's happy, and congratulations again. David Pearson, the winner of the 18th annual Daytona 500, and one of the most spectacular finishes any auto race has ever had. Two laps to go now as David Pearson peels into turn number one. Remarkably, in second place is Bill Elliott, number 17. Highest place so far this year has been a fourth. He's never won a race. And Terry Labonte, who finished fourth a year ago, is running third. I think that's a remarkable performance by these two young drivers, Jackie. Tremendous performance, but I'd have to take my hat off most, I suppose, to David Pearson, the old fox himself. And there he goes, taking the white flag with only one lap to go. Drivers have fainted, they've been collapsing, they've had ammonia sniffs, they've had oxygen. But that man, all he's had all day is a steering wheel. Nobody has ever won more races here at Darlington than 44-year-old David Pearson. He has won eight previous races, two Southern, six Rebels, and is on his way to race win number nine at Darlington, the toughest place in the world to win. This will be his 104th career win. He's won over $2 million, and he's earned every penny of the winning purse today, and there's the checker for David Pearson. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the greatest driver in the history of NASCAR, Mr. David Pearson. <laughs> On this day, 23rd day of May, 2011, it is my honor to formally induct David Pearson into the NASCAR Hall of Fame and present him this inductee ring. Thank you, Russell and Leonard. Appreciate that. 
what can I say after all they said? Yeah. <coughs> but anyway, I want to thank the good Lord and my family. <coughs> Don't be laughing. <coughs> for putting up with me while I was racing and everything. So uh, it was good, and especially the fans. I got quite a few from the Y. Got a bus and come up here today, so I appreciate them coming up. And, of course, I appreciate all of it. 